1998 Brownlow Medal winner is Robert Harvey from the Sheffield Football. He is the most decorated man in football today, St Kilda's prolific club champion, a back-to-back -back winner of the Brownlow Medal and at state level simply the best. Harves is an AFL champion and this is his story. The Saint with the big heart and superb skills. Robert Harvey, the story so far, is out on video now along with Worsfold on Worsfold and Vix. The AFL Champion Series, get your copies at these stores now. He achieved hero status in South Australia as the first Adelaide skipper to hold aloft the AFL Premiership Cup. To be a back-to-back -back Premiership captain has assured Mark Bickley's place in football folklore. In Bix, he goes behind the scenes. He tells the stories, relives the moments. Bix, the Mark Bickley story is out on video now, along with Robert Harvey, the story so far, and Worsfold on Worsfold. The AFL Champion Series, get your copies at these stores now. When he crossed the white line, he changed from friendly family pharmacist into one of the game's hard men. In Worsfold on Worsfold, the two-time Eagles Premiership captain relives a memorable and hard-hitting career. He tells it like he played it, no holds barred. Worsfold on Worsfold, the story of an Eagles legend is out now, along with Robert Harvey, the story so far, and Bix, the Mark Bickley story. The AFL Champion Series on video at these stores now. Bucks, the Collingwood champion with the exquisite skills. Bucks, the man with the booming kick. Lovely looking kick by Buckley for the Pies. Bucks, the captain of the most famous team in the land. This is the story you've been waiting for, the inner thoughts of Nathan Buckley, the man behind the decorated Collingwood star. Bucks, the Nathan Buckley story, joins Robert Harvey, John Worsfold and Mark Bickley in the AFL Champion Series from Australian Football Video. Get your copies at these stores now. Since 1937 it has been football's Everest, the peak that so many thousands of young footballers have tried unsuccessfully to conquer. To some, just a number. Set 62 years ago by a bloke named Nuts who played for the Woods. 1,299 goals, the longest standing record in the history of the game. Of more than 13,000 players to have played in the highest league in the land over 102 seasons, only five have kicked 1,000 goals. Two wore the blue and white of Geelong. Two vastly different players of different eras. Gary Ablett performed his miracles until his knees gave way. In 1996, at the age of 34, he retired after kicking 1,030 goals. Burley and brooding, Doug Wade laid the foundation to his goal-kicking feats at Cadinia Park. He didn't care how he kicked them, punts or drop kicks, and even the odd trick shot helped him to 1,057 goals. I know this bloke well. He had his sights firmly on old Nuts' record, but in 1998 decided after 1,254 goals that the body had called it a day. That left one man to do what Coleman and Hudson, Pratt and McKenna, and so many others who have thrilled us with their daring had failed to do. Back in 1968, Gordon Coventry joined a couple of other old timers named Jack Dyer and Lou Richards on World of Sport. Shy and unassuming, the great old spearhead was asked the obvious question. <laughs> Gordon, to kick 1,299 goals, it's a tremendous amount of goals to kick, uh, isn't it? Yes. Do you think boys today will ever kick that amount? Oh. Blokes like Kakovic and these fellas. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know. You don't know? No. You know what he had the cheek to say? We were having an interview. He said, we've found another Gordon Coventry, Kekovic. That was the oh, most, I didn't know. I didn't say that. The thing I've heard anyone say, Gordon. Oh, well, he hasn't been playing long, has he? Well, look, he hasn't got many goals either. <laughs> Finally, there is a new name on top of the goal-kicking list for the first time since 1930, when Coventry ended Dick Lee's 20-year reign as the league's greatest goal-kicker. He was christened Anthony Lockett. But to fans everywhere, he is just plain a plugger. With this kick, it's going to go! Got it! It's got it! He's come out! And aren't we privileged to be a little part of it? A remarkable play ensures the fact. Always loved playing footy. Always did as a kid, and I, I just, I just guess I'm uh, one of the lucky ones that have, you know, have made a, a career out of it. 
and uh, having thoroughly enjoyed my time and feel very honoured to have been able to play for so long. Unique 65 metres out, centering towards Lockett. Graham, Lockett, Lockett's got it. Just his strength. Graham just ran into a brick wall after and his name was Lockett. After this, there might only be 11 to go, see. The chase has absorbed the nation. It was the record they said could never be broken. No, no, Lockett's uh, record will never be broken uh, because people, uh, players, just don't play it full forward for long enough anymore. I think it's probably scary in effect too that you know, the number of games that Tony's missed with suspension and injury and uh, uh, if they'd have been out of control better at an early age, I mean, I think he would have smashed the record two or three years ago. But it would take one hell of a player, one, one hell of a player. I mean, this is a guy who's, I've seen him kick 12 goals uh, and his side lost. I mean, boy, one of the things that helps him of course, uh, kick goals is he's just a tremendous kick. Applied around the middle of the ground, you would think, uh, if the ball's going to come in... Lockett's style like is this. reflected in his figures. Seven Lockett out of every ten shots result in goals. Which may leave just nine left. Beautiful <laughs> kick. Have a look at that. That's a video you can watch if you want to kick a goal. Everyone's got a different kicking style, um, but I think the main problem with with blokes when they kick for goal is, is they're not natural about it. And I think... Uh, too many times um, they become too robotic, they're too stiff and and then just not kicking in a natural sense. They're not, uh, they're having too much time to think about it. They're thinking of what they're doing, you know, as they're walking in to kick the goal instead of thinking about what, what they really should be thinking about and that basically gets down to what I think is, is three things and, and it's really just to keep your head over the ball and drop the ball straight on your foot and, 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 and just follow through. And that's, that's all I've, I've ever sort of practised. Flugger has played 265 games, but missed 100 games through injury and suspension. And what did you kick in your last year? That's your 18th year of league foot? 72. 72 goals. And how many, how many goals did you kick in a match? What was your highest? Not 17. 17. How many times? Twice. And how many 15s and 14s did you oh. kick? I can't remember. <laughs> Nuts, uh, Nuts, do you think... Uh, As you used to walk into the old VFL Park, AFL Park, I used to have the pictures up on the on the left-hand wall there, and uh, they had a picture of him, of him up there on the, with the uh, 1,299 goals. And, um, yeah, I just used to you know walk along there as we are going to the club rooms, down to get changed, and, and uh, you know, just look up at all the, all the different photos there. Nuts played in five Collingwood premierships. He played 25 times for Victoria, kicking 100 goals, and remains the only man to have been the league's top goal kicker five years in a row. I think it really only recently, probably, probably last year, sort of in the second half of last year, I guess, was really when I first thought, you know, well, maybe I can get this record. Um, but really before that, you know, it's the last couple of years have really been a year-by-year -year thing to me. And, and after a disappointing 97, uh, through injury and, and everything like that, I thought, you know, it, uh, you know I, was, I was starting to struggle a bit and I thought that I was probably getting pretty close to the end. He was always going to be a league footballer, but how, how good a league footballer was a question that was left to be answered. He was just an outstanding junior. And uh, I think anyone in Ballarat had backed me up on that part. Yeah, first game was uh, and first goal was at Waverley. Played against Geelong, come on uh, third quarter, just after half time. Uh, it was also the day that Silvio Fashuni and Paul Morwood um, made their de debut with uh, St Kilda and uh, come on in, uh, in the third quarter and lined up on Ray Card. And I still remember the goal. Jeff Dunn come off the half forward flank and, and uh, hit me in the pocket. And uh, yeah, just went back and kicked a goal. It was a big thrill. As a century goal kicker, Pete, call this 100th goal in league football of Tony Lockett's if he kicks it. Well, Tony Lockett coming in for goal number 100. He'll never forget. It's a goal! A great effort by the young champ. A beautiful kick. And there are the Saints players protecting Tony Lockett. And the crowd are coming on in their hundreds and thousands. Probably the first 100 goals is the thing. Uh, the ball going through the air at Moorabbin was probably the biggest buzz that I've ever got, you know. And uh, then kicking the winning goal straight after it was a really great thrill. It's uh, probably a Brownlow medal, to have a son to win a Brownlow medal. I think, you know, that's probably the ultimate. And I just would have loved him to have got a premiership, and I hope so this year. Plugger is superstitious. 
Yeah, I've uh, had the same bag since I started. I've still got the same bag. Um, I've got a set of towels there that I've probably had for 10 years. Uh, there's four of them, and they, they're the only towels that go to a game with me. Um, they're about the main two. I do like to get my jumper off the property steward in probably the last two or three blokes to get it off him, you know, so I do get changed pretty late. Um, just little things like that that I, you know, I've always done. And, uh, you know, I just continue to do it until I retire. I think there's too much going on with footy at the present time to, to worry about you know what's what's been and gone. Um, I'd just like to finish finish this year off, see where I'm at. But I think once I get a little bit older, you know, it'll, you'll spend more time thinking back on your playing days and, and thinking back on the blokes you played on and the blokes you played with, and and I, you'll probably have a quiet snicker every now and again, just a few of the few of the funny times along the way, you know, in, in which you've been a part of. Yeah, I look forward to. It. Lock it from. 25 metres, it shouldn't be a problem. He's almost directly in front. This familiar, slow, deliberate approach. Just a couple of steps. Here they come again. I think it's working better this time, Sandy. A football legend was born He was raised out there in the country Of cold and frosty morns He heard the game of calling But nobody ever guessed That this young man was destined And season after season, he made the game his own. The Harbour Lights of Sydney took him in and called him son. Only brave men stand against him as he counts them back. He was a big raw fellow from North Ballarat. 
Just a kid, really, who was thrust into league football as a 16-year-old. Today, he's probably the most talked about footballer of any code in the country. Tony Lockett hated the big smoke. He loved the bush, but he'd be destined for a fabulous football career. All AFL clubs continued their frenetic wheeling and dealing right up until the 2 o'clock deadline, which saw 18 players change clubs and another 84 delisted. The delicate negotiations between the Saints and Swans on Lockett finally ended just two hours before the deadline. Plugger officially ending his turbulent 12-year career at Moorabbin. Well, I told him to uh, uh, keep cool and keep focus on the football and to, to not to do anything that could be construed in any other way other than something that's going to keep him playing, playing every Saturday. I didn't really know what to expect when I first moved up, but probably within the first three or four months I really... Um, you know, I mean, I enjoyed it right from the word go, but um, after three or four months, so I, um, you know, whenever we did go back to Melbourne, I, you know, I always looked forward to coming back here. It was um, it just sort of grabbed me straight away. It was great. For the first time in more than a decade, Plugger has a new home and is preparing for the pressures associated with moving to a new city and becoming the game's highest paid player. Look, I'm not going to put any undue pressure on myself. I think there's going to be enough of that as there is from other people. Um, I just want to go out there, do the best I can. Uh, I just want to be able to walk off the ground with my head high saying, well, you know, I did the, the best I could today. What do you say to the St Kilda fans and the kids with number four in their duffel coats? I don't really know what I'd say to the kids, but, um, you know, all I can say is, I guess, in one way, I'm sorry or, or something like that. It was probably the best thing I've done. I think after 12 years at, uh, at St Kilda that um, uh, my footy was starting to suffer and, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, uh, you know, I thought I wasn't playing as good as I could have and, and I was letting myself down and letting the club down so I didn't want that to, to go on anymore so I made the decision to move and um, it's, you know, it's been the best decision for me and I guess and for St Kilda as well. A blind turn, he straightens up, bang, that's a goal for his fourth. Firstly, it was coming out of contract with St Kilda that year and I think that we became aware of it about midway through the season. Uh, it was the um, year that uh, St Kilda played Sydney up in uh, Sydney. Sydney led all the, most of the day, or half time they were about 15 goals in front. And then Lockett proceeded to kick 14 goals, knock out Peter Caven and uh, send the com Sydney crowd into a complete uproar. And I think we made up our minds then that he was the man we had to chase. Ten goals to Plugger. And uh, it's like any recruiting chase, you just uh, stay on it and uh, we had to beat down some uh, pretty uh, aggressive uh, pursuiters in uh, Collingwood and Richmond and there were others. But um, look, I think that at the end of the day we won the race because uh, we never flinched from the, from the pursuit of him and from telling him how much we needed him to come to Sydney to get the place right for the first time in the history of the Swans moving to um, moving to Sydney. Tony's been uh, fantastic value because really as a sportsman uh, he transcends all codes uh, in the city. Uh, he's recognised by people that, uh, that follow all codes and he really is a genuine Australian sports star and uh, one that uh, people could relate to. It's Bays who sets Sydney going once again. Ruse oh. a little check to oh. Lockett. Dropped it. But recovered well. Snaps round the body. He bends it back. The fact that, um, well, I think there's two sides coming up in now, but you know, for the first four years, five years, there's really only been the, you know, the one AFL side here, and I guess, um, you know, that's probably made things a little bit easier. And I guess for the first couple of years, I was up here, sort of, no one really um, took much notice, um, you know, of the Swans. Really, it was, I mean, '96 we started to get a lot of following, but it wasn't really till the end of '96 and into '97 that we really, you know. Um, started filling the ground up and, and people really getting behind us when they had the, uh, the big trouble with the, the Super League in the Rugby League. At first Lockett was almost invisible in Sydney. A trip to the supermarket was an anonymous treat. Today he is the star attraction at every function run by the Swans. It is only early. Obviously we would have liked to have got off to a better start than what we have, but um, we haven't. And we've just got to face the facts. We've just got to get on with the game and... Uh, really focus on this week. It's probably going to be um, as hard a game as what it'll be all year, this 
this week, I'm sure not when he came, it was probably considered a pretty gutsy move. Um, but I think I think it's been a, a situation where everyone's won out. But I think it's been in Tony's best interest. Certainly, he's been of enormous benefit to the club, both directly and indirectly. And the next question, those Lone Star Steakhouse and Saloon ads, how bad are they? Has anyone yeah. seen them? Very ordinary. I mean, I had a small involvement, but what's with the Groucho Marx face? Yeah, yeah I was good looking on it. I will say that uh, they sold out of the ribs the nights in Melbourne and... Oh, um, I ate most of them anyway. And <laughs> in Adelaide, the nights... I put a good if you do have a question, uh, now's it. I think the profile of the club and the code as a whole has grown in New South Wales, in part. Certainly not entirely as a consequence of Tony. But I think the code as a whole around Australia, because of the... The lift in the profile of Sydney has benefited as well, so I think Tony's, Tony's legacy here when he finally departs will be considerable. How are you, Sarah? All right? Yeah. That's the way. Special kids are his special interest. Smile for the camera there. Yeah. There you go, and say hello to everyone. Hello. That's the way. That's yeah, I think it's important. Obviously, um, I'd like to do a bit more of it, but you know, with the with the way that uh, the footy's going, we don't get much spare time these days. But I think the, the, the thing you do get out of it is just the smile that you put on a kid's face. And, uh, you know, I think that that's more rewarding than anything you can really do. You're already set up, are you? Play with a pool, do you? No, it's not set up. I do. We better go and have a game. Oh. Want a game of pool? Okay. You might go and do that, eh? I must warn you, he's good at this. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I might be in a bit of strife here, eh? I'm good at relaxing as well. Sorry? Oh, I'm good at relaxing as well. Yeah, I'm not too bad at that either. <laughs> Once you've got kids, um, just to see them smile and be happy, I don't think you can really ask for much more in life, really. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Shall I go for bigs now? You're on the bigs, mate. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Catch it. Oh, nearly. <coughs> oh, yeah. Dad got it. We really don't know how lucky we are, you know. Um, you know, you get home and you grizzle about this and grizzle about that, but you know, when you see, you know, little kids like that that are, you know, that have, that have got a handicap or you know, have been very unfortunate, um, just to see them um, really realises how lucky we we are. And uh, as I said, just to see it, just to see a smile appear on their face is um, some of the greatest and, and fondest memories you could ever have. Oh, good shot. It's good for sports people to come out here. Um, I think all kids need role models, and for someone that's high profile, like a prominent Swans player, um, to actually take an interest in the kids, take an interest in their lives, play a bit of sport with them, um, yeah, it's great. They look forward to the visits. They, um, we had one little girl here today who was awake at half past six, waiting uh, for the guys to arrive this morning. Number 40, drafted 94, to Maxfield, to Lockett. That's how you play full forward, Don. Melbourne making a change, going off Stephen Phoebe. Adeluzzo he's coming on. Old. He's got it. Congratulations, Plugger. Now, I'll just take a little bit of a guess. I wouldn't have a clue it is, but I think it might be Tony Lockett. Come on, big fella. Good to see you, mate. Get down over there. Well, you are a superstar. There's no doubt about it. It rests nicely on your shoulders. But the big question that Australia is asking, are you going to be right for tomorrow? You're in the side, you're selected, are you going to run out? No, I'm not, Rex. I've been... Uh... The medical staff have seen it fit to give me another week off, so very disappointing on my behalf. And I guess, uh, you know, after having half a week on the track, they just didn't think it was quite enough. So they've uh, decided to give me another week off and, uh, and come up for the week later. Very, very disappointing for you because you put in such a big pre-season. Very disappointing, Rex. It's probably the hardest I've trained 
uh, for, for quite a number of years, I think. And, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, I was on the track in November, which is something that's sort of hasn't happened for a long time. And I was very keen to, to really uh, put something back into the club that have been, you know, pretty good to me over the, the 12 years that I've been there. And, uh, you know, showed a little bit of form in the practice matches, I thought. And, uh, you know, to have a sort of a, a decent sort of injury like this so early on is very disappointing, but you know, it's just something that you've got to get over and, and get on with it. Well, you kicked three goals very early in the first quarter against North Melbourne. You looked in rare form and, and you came off the ground. I believe the medical staff said, Plugger, if you stay on the ground, you're going to really be a chance to miss eight or nine weeks. Was that the case? Yeah, well, that's what we're sort of still looking at. And, you know, the thing was, if, we, if I came back early, well, I could still have been looking at that. So, uh, you know, I know it's three or four weeks I've missed now, but that's probably better than, you know, if it happens again, you know, I could be looking at six to eight, so. And of course, uh, you know, you must have run over a cat or something like that, uh, can't say a Chinaman, because I wouldn't say that, you know that. But uh, the most important thing is that you and Stuart Lowe mean so much to the side, and you and Stewie work in unison at centre half forward and full forward. What a disappointing thing. Yeah, well, Stewie's very disappointed. I mean, he's got a, you know, a terrible groin injury that's just taken months now to, to really come good. But, uh, you know, he, uh, He's a big chance of playing tomorrow, and uh, you know I just hope I hope that he uh, you know goes well if he plays, and you know gets a couple of early grabs where his confidence can really reap the benefit. You started in the early 1980s. We're now nearly midway through the 1990s, so you've you've travelled over two decades. What are the major changes you've seen in the commitment that you have to put to the game? Yeah, well, obviously, uh, you know, training and uh, commitment to the club is is you know I know it was it was very big back in the early 80s, but now we're seeing, you know, the players are just about required full time at, you know, at, at each and every football club. Training score, commitments not only the on the track but also uh, in the gymnasium and, and different little things that clubs do as in boxing and swimming and, and different fitness aspects of the game. So we're really seeing, uh, you know, I know at our club we train four and an optional night of five nights a week. So it's really getting, coming, you know, full time and I think, you know, in the years to come that we are going to see a lot more players turn professional. Now your dad, he was... Well, Bob Davis said that he was probably one of the greatest bush footballers never to have played league football, and he's well thought of at the Boca Footy Club. I've been reading the history that Rob Asprey sent me down. How much of an influence was your famous dad on you as a kid? Oh, I guess he must have been some sort of influence on me, Rex. Uh, he quite often tells me that I used to annoy the, the hell out of him to get out on the road and kick the footy whenever he had any spare time sort of thing. But, you know, he's been, uh, like all fathers, he's been very good. He's been very, uh, very guiding to me. He never sort of interferes. Only when I've got a problem will he show his head sort of thing. And, and when I want his help, he's always there to help. But he never, ever interferes with me football. And uh, I think that's probably uh, been a real telling factor. And sort of, you know, he's given me my own sort of responsibility on, uh, you know, on what I should do. And when I need help, I just uh, get on the phone. You seem a lot more relaxed. You seem a lot more at peace with Tony Lockett. Two years ago, if I rang you up on Friday and said, I want you in here for your show, you'd have told me to go forth and multiply. <laughs> now, you are here today, you're laughing. You seem pretty relaxed, mate. Pretty relaxed. Oh, I'm getting pretty old. And, you know, what, 28? Yeah, well, you know, I've had 12 years in the caper now, and I guess that's... That, oh, you poor old thing. That's a fair time for any, any of the footballers, Rex, I guess. But, you know, I hope that I've, I can still give the St Kilda Football Club another good two or three years' service. Yeah. That's, you know, I, I think I really do owe them something after... You know, a, a couple of real frustrating runs with injuries. I mean, no, no one likes to be sitting out on the sidelines watching, especially me. It gets very frustrating. But, you know, I just want to get back and, and get back to something where I know that I can play. Finally, what a cruel game it can be. Stan Els, probably one of the most celebrated Melbourne captains of all time. He went to North Melbourne to play with the great Barassi <clears> era, got his medallion, and now people are saying, gee, what's so different to him and uh, Kenny Sheldon? It is a cruel game, isn't it? Very cruel game. Coaching's probably the hardest aspect of, of, of our game of football, you know. Players uh, come and go a lot, but, you know, the coach has got to be the brunt of just about of all his team's performance, uh, not only of the seniors, but also of the seconds, I guess. But, uh, you know, Stan's a, a lovely bloke, a terrific fellow, got a lot of knowledge on, on the sport of football. You know, I'd just love to see him do well. He's, you know, he's been real good to yeah. me, and uh, you know, I know he's held in very high respect amongst all the, all the players at St Kilda. And uh, you know, we've had a little bit of a scratchy start to the season, but we are really looking forward to each game week in, yeah. week out now, and we're going to give it our best for Stan. It's a long year, and let's uh, not uh, let the year go too far down the track. 
um, before you and I went aligned together. That was a good trip up at Darwin to Seven Spirit, Spirit Bay and you like knocking those barramundi on the head. Oh, I think so, Rex, and I'm sure you told everyone that I did catch the biggest fish <laughs> for the trip. <laughs> I did. Well, Raquel, have we got uh, something here for uh, Tony Lock? I reckon we might have a Rex Hunt beanie because uh, if we can fit it over his big buff head, Stephen. <laughs> okay, coming in here now and have a look. Look at that catch first trip. It is the Rex Hunt Channel 7 yibbity yibbity beanie, mate, and I reckon we might put it on there like that, okay? And this will be the greatest thing since Ron Black and Jerry G. And uh, thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks a lot, Rex. <laughs> this is I'm Rex Hunt and you're not. Many good judges have described the last decade as a golden era of full forwards. Dream time for the goal kickers. Let me tell you, the opposition has been fierce. How about the fullback of the century? A man who rarely lowers his colours. Neither Ruckman get it. Winmar hands to it. Bills out here to Rice. Looks for Lockett, one out. He's got it again. This was the classic confrontation. Moravan in 1989. He's got that one. Oh, I can tell you now, it was a bit of a learning experience. Uh, just an awesome... Uh, it was an awesome game, really. Uh, I think both of us had plenty of the ball, but uh, Tony's ended up kicking 10 goals, 7. And, uh, you know, kicking the winning goal just before the final siren, I think it was. Here's the kick in. Low. This is Fode. The Saints have led just about all day. Carlton lead now. The business end. Towards Lockett. Second attempt. Play on is the call. Play on. That was giving a free kick. They need nine at least this afternoon. It's good. The Saints are back in front. Uh, I've always rated Stephen as probably my hardest opponent um, over my whole career. Um, he is the best player I've played on. And, uh, yeah, look, things just went right for me that day, I guess. Uh, we ended up, it was a close game, and we ended up winning, which, uh, which was fantastic. He charges onto it, gives a great hand pass to Winmar. Some killer a chance, Winmar looks for Lockett. Yes! I'll never forget going for the last one where he's taken the mark. The ball actually grazed me fist, so... But, uh, you know, I, after that game, to be honest, I was shattered. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'd never forget Robert, Robert Walls come up, coming up to me and even my old man, he said, well, there was no one else to, to put on him. But, uh, you know, basically, I can honestly say after that uh, game, he shattered me confidence a little bit. Three seconds left on the clock. Possibly the last chance for St Kilda. They trail by two points. Tony Lockett. I think they were, they were great moments uh, to have because we'd done all the real hard yards. Um, we, you know, we used to get flogged week in and week out. And, and then all of a sudden, uh, under the guidance of uh, Kenny Sheldon, that um, we really started to become a team. We had a young Robert Harvey and Nicky Winmar, Nathan Burke. Lowy was, uh, you know, really starting to take off. And all of a sudden, you know, we started winning games. And um, I reckon that was probably one of the most enjoyable parts of my whole career. It's a kill to score before the siren. Lock it from the pocket. He shoots over his shoulder. It's not a bad looking kick. It's a goal. There was just certain occasions where um, where Tony Lockett won the game for, for our club off his own boot. And uh, you know, it's it, all you all you can say is a young kid who who is playing his fifth or sixth senior game, it's a pleasure and an honour to have played in, in, in a game like that with a player. That, um, that I certainly regard as one of the as the best that I've ever seen. There have been three standout games in his long career: one steeped in emotion, one in high drama, and the other in disappointment. It was very emotional. Uh, you know, I've uh, had a long friendship uh, with Teddy um, right throughout my career, and he was a you know a, 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 just a fantastic person, a, a real man's man and uh, a good friend and um, to see Teddy before that game you know he, he couldn't really see too well and you know he still fought it upon himself to come down to the rooms talk to all the players that were playing that day and uh, I thought that that took a lot of courage and just fantastic effort and um, yeah it was just very emotional and you know I guess the one thing I really um, would have loved to have, have seen and been a bit more involved in was Actually, when he went back up on the ground and, and done the lap of honour in the car, I think if all the players could have been out on the ground at that stage, it, would have, it just would have topped the day off. Uh, just 
probably would go down as the most emotional and one of the fondest memories I do have over a long career. Off the left foot, passes to That Tony Lockett, he's kicked three. Tony Lockett, what a kick! Magnificent goal, Lockett. Back. Kicks it in towards half four. Lockett out in front. Strong hands, strong body. Great match. Uh, 89 playing against Jay, playing with Jason was a great honour, and uh, you know now to, today to play with Gary Wolf. Well, you know, there's probably not too many better footballers than them two getting around at the moment, so it was just a good honour. Yeah, well, I wouldn't mind having him beside me every week too. But, uh, no, he's a great player and, uh, you know, obviously played well today and uh, that was just a great job by all the guys. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud to present the EJ Witten medal to a great player in Tony Lockett. To win this medal will go down as probably one of the happiest days of my life and I'll treasure it forever. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, the thought on every person's mind, including mine, was that uh, no, he hadn't. He had that bad, bad groin. He'd missed the uh, first final, so he hadn't played for three weeks, and uh, um, and he hadn't kicked over 40 metres uh, in that period of time. So whether there was a question mark about whether he'd be able to kick the distance. Simons back to Blumfield. A mark taken by Chapman. He can kick it forward. There's 22 seconds left. The kick towards Look the out. goal. Lock's going to be mad. Lock has got it. 50 metres from goal. If he kicks a point, the Swans are into the grand final. You know, going back and taking that kick, I'd heard the siren go. The siren go. I went back and steadied myself again, and, and and I just remember thinking to myself, well, you know, just got to do it. And I think, really, that just the way uh, the game was and the feeling being out there, um, you know, it was just incredible. I think the the adrenaline just took over. Not only did it win the game for us, but it, it got us into a grand final. That's what we're all here for, you know, after after so long, playing for so long and to finally... I remember walking into the club rooms that night after the game and, and, I, and I said to Craig O'Brien next to me, I said, we're in a grand final next week, mate. Unbelievable. And that was it. You had to realise that Lockett had put Sydney into a grand final for the first time in 51 years. Kelly's going, he is such a spiritual leader, just like Wayne Kelly. It's lovely to have a hero as captain, isn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely. He's a hero, Paul Kelly. Just a fantastic on baller, works so hard, great ability, and just a great heart and a great example, Seto. You uh, couldn't wish for two better captains than we're seeing today Wayne Carey for North Melbourne, Paul Kelly. Tony Lockett. I think the whole focus was the fairy tale of Sydney, and obviously Tony Lockett was, uh, was the main focus of that, getting into the grand final. So, we were very aware of, uh, of uh, the whole hype about uh, Plugger and the grand final, obviously. Kelly, well done to Bays. Bays away to Grant, fantastic kick to Mooney, who can thump the ball from a long way. He's going to go to Luff, very wide, he's got him. Well, why can't he go back and kick another? Except he's going to go on, and he's got a man all on his own, in the pocket, to Bays. Bays plays on the lock, and another one! Great play! You know, we certainly went into the game thinking we could win it, um, and that I think really showed. The first quarter was uh, was great. We um, we played really well. We we got to a stage where I think we're nearly four goals up, um, and we're on a bit of a roll. And uh, I know it was only early in the game, but you know you're thinking, oh God, you know, we might be there. We might be there. Back in the middle. One in that losing step. side, Lockett kicked six. His only grand final Couldn't appearance. Pick it up cleanly. Suck it up the ground. There it is. It was a great disappointment, but it was a great achievement, I guess, by by all the, the Swans players and the club to actually make the grand final. So, I mean, you know, we were very grateful and very happy for that, but it still does leave a little bit of an empty feeling that, uh, you know, we didn't go on and win the game. Um, but, yeah, it certainly was a highlight. Two at 
this stage. Well waited kick, wasn't he? Moved into space. And, and here he goes, Lee. I'm sorry, but this is for 1,200. And he's done it! Parker has joined a very elite group. Goal number 1,200. This is a new boot uh, that's being released in, uh, for the World Cup uh, this year. Sorry, the last year of the World Cup, wasn't it? Uh, it's a totally new shoe. It has you know, the cell cushioning, yeah, yeah. the new ground control. So it's just slightly different to what you used to, uh, you've been used to wearing in the King. Yeah, right, yep. So it's a different system altogether, so it allows you a little, little bit better grip and uh, it allows you a lot more comfort. This, they, they reckon this is a better grip, Paradise? Yeah, they do. It allows you to, to penetrate the ground and oh, allows you to have yeah. a little bit more flexibility uh, oh, with the turning. How does it go here, just on the, on the side here? You're not finding the players are sort of going over no, on the sides uh, no, or anything like that? No, it's, uh, they're slightly flared. Yeah. If you look down, oh, yeah, yeah. they're slightly flared out, so it just gives you a little bit mm. more stability on the, on the yeah. shoe. Um, which is just slightly different to what you've also yeah. uh, been wearing in, in yeah. the harder grounds. So these, are the ones that, these are the ones I've been wearing now for this type of model for I guess the last three or four years now. Yeah. And I've found these terrific. I think because I've got a broader foot, um, these seem to be a little bit wider around the heel. And uh, with the, um, the wedge in them there, yep. it just gives the, uh, the ankle and the Achilles a bit more support and just raises the heel up a little bit. I, I find uh, these to probably be the, the most comfortable, especially when we're playing up here where the, the grounds are sort of harder than what they are down in Melbourne, you know. Right. These have been fantastic. The new boot to rear that <coughs> we've uh, actually designed to take the place of uh, grass cap this year is a boot called uh, Cell Grass, oh, yeah. which has been built on uh, a running shoe last, yep. but actually gives you a new stud pattern, oh, right, yeah. similar to what we've got in the yeah. top end of the soccer boots, with the ground control system which allows the penetration but also allows you the twisting has the raised wedge which you're talking about here in your grass cat and also has cell the mm, cushioning mm. system here in the heel. I think with a with a boot like this the main and they are very light, yeah. the most important thing is because they, they um they are a broad boot is um, they've got to retain uh, their light weight. I think if they get too heavy um, it turns a lot of players off. Boots have got to be hundred percent and uh, the most important thing about them they've got to be comfortable. With a range of Puma, I mean as you can see here we've got one uh, huge range here to fit every different shaped foot there is on the market, I guess. And I've got a, an oddly shaped foot, so I've got a very broad foot across the, the middle and the back. So I find uh, that these ones here on a dry ground suit uh, my needs the most. Um, the sole is a little bit different. It's more like a, a cross between a footy boot and a runner, but uh, I find the traction on these, I hardly ever slip over uh, in the dry conditions with them. And uh, I find them to be most comfortable and um, there's a big uh, percentage of players at the Sydney Swans uh, wear these grass cat boots, uh, they're extremely good. Just, uh, just an introduction also, uh, we've had over the last uh, couple of years we've been introducing colours. Uh, oh, they're the, pretty flash then, Not the they? right colour for the Sydney Swans, but uh, <laughs> certainly we've uh, done those in the yellow and also uh, we do boots in the red and the white and also in, uh, in uh, blue as well, which is the, in, oh, yeah. the king colour. Well, I don't know mate, how am I going to scrub up in a pair of these? I'd draw it pretty well and pick your 1300 <laughs> yeah, in those. You'd want to make sure you're getting a kick, <laughs> won't you? Hey? Oh, they've changed a lot now. I mean, this thing here, the wedge here, uh, which has been introduced uh, for cushioning and also uh, for Achilles tendon problems. Um, this has been introduced uh, only, only recently, I guess. It hasn't been around that long. Um, but it's just one of the new innovations that, uh, um, with the boots getting more high tech every year now that uh, um, they've really just got to be um, spot on for all the different athletes' needs. and. Uh, I, as I said before, I find those extremely comfortable um, and extremely lightweight, which is also very important. Come on, plug it. These are no good, mate. You're in the wrong department here. Don't listen, mate. There's not long to go. I reckon I might have a bit of a career as a cricketer after this. What do you reckon? Well, someone said you could hit a ball straight away. Oh, yeah. Once, they're, uh, once they're hit, they'd stay hit. Well, I wouldn't mind. Uh, what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to have a few games of cricket when I finish. So yep. I might have to get some pads off here and see how we go, mate, eh? Yeah, not a problem. We can organise that. No and, uh, Organise the bat, and I reckon the bat to go with would be uh, uh, the bat that uh, Cubby hit his 3-3-4 with, and I reckon you might hit that in a very short season if you didn't hit him that well. So oh, that'd be no problem at all. <laughs> Knocked down that time. Back to Reese Jones. Got one a bit. These on. were the Got very early days. The kick, the Goal number three in game two. Now a kid in number 37. The for the Saints, he'd kicked 898 goals in 183 games. It's a good games. one too, and it'll be a mark to lock it. 
And he's only about uh, 35 to 40 metres out from goal directly in front. It's one of those things, I guess. I mean, I was only a 16-year-old coming down. You know, I'd been used to playing footy with uh, 14, 15, 16-year-old kids, and all of a sudden you're in the, so to speak, big time, playing with blokes like Trevor Barker and Jeff Saru, Grant Thomas and all these type of fellas, Michael Roberts and all that. So I guess it was a bit of a, a little bit of a shock. Um, and no, I, mate, I was just any normal kid, I guess. I just wanted to, to go about and, and get a place in the senior side and, and whatever. But, I, you know, I was a quiet kid. I, I certainly, uh, I'd certainly admit that, but I, I wouldn't say I was shy. The kick. And that's a, a goal, another goal to uh, the Saints, and they're coming back with a bit of bounce now. 14-9-93, yeah, the Swans to St Kilda, 10-8-68. Dad's probably been the, the most, in, you know, most influential person I guess in my life, let alone my, my footy career, and uh, you know he's um, he gives he gives me advice only when I really ask for it or if he thinks I need it. So he doesn't interfere too much at all, um, which I think you know can be a, a problem with a lot of a lot of young players and, and footballers. I think uh, you know it's good to have guidance and uh, and things like that, but you know. There really is a mark, I think, that you know you, you don't want to overstep. But but Dad's been great. He's you know he's encouraged me the whole way. I think Tony and I have really had in-depth conversations about football about seven or eight times during his career. It's probably when he's been down and that's you know I, I don't believe in uh, parents interfering with their uh, sons when they're being coached by people at that level. And uh, certainly when he's I've been there for him and his mother and all all his family have and. Uh, We've been there, and as far as the football side goes, but we've had good talks sometimes, and uh, you know, and uh, just when he needed it. Tony Lockett. A rare family outing. The Lockett's together on the eve of the record. I think he's a better brother now than what he was. <laughs> <laughs> no, very good. Um, always look after you if the chips were down, or if there was a fight around, or he always stood up, stood up for the family. He's one guy um, that has a real aura about him, um, whether you meet him off the ground and or see him on the ground. Um, I've been lucky enough to meet him a few times and still has a, a real aura about him. And if you know he's playing on a Sunday afternoon, you get a meal, sit up and say, yeah, we'll see how many players are going to kick today. No, he's quite good to live with. He's trying to sort of forget about it, not make a big deal about it. So, no, it's been quite easy to live with. Before he arrived here in Sydney, um, I was only going of you know how the uh, how the press sort of portrayed him and um, and I think they'll well as far as I'm concerned they're pretty much off the mark um, he's a uh, he's a very much a team orientated player and um, and, a, and a family man you know so um, I don't know I think I, I sort of hang around him a bit too much and he pretend he just becomes sort of pluggy you know but then uh, every now and then you sort of stand next to him and you realize how big he is but then I looked after the farm for him while he was playing. But no, I generally go to most games, but not all the time in Sydney. We have a bit of a chat. I think our last chat was about our children out there, which, uh, you know, which was a pleasant thing. We sort of took our minds off the game a little bit. But, uh, you know, Tony's a great fella. He's a great player, to be honest. And, uh, you know, I think over the years we sort of probably gained a bit of respect for each other. And it's great to be able to, you know, have a chat every now and then. Love it, yeah. Love, love the football. Love going to watch him play. It's just fantastic. He's just done uh, so well in his career. He's just been a, an absolute dream to watch. So yeah, it's been great. He is probably the, one of the most skilled big men uh, that I've seen. I'm not talking about big, just in. Well, he's not that tall. Is he? He's only what is he? Six foot two in, in the old. There's not too many players around uh, with that build as skillful and as quick and as balanced as uh, Tony Lockett. Probably a different person away from football, of course. Um, you know, we both of us like nothing better than going to the golf course and playing each other and a bit of fishing and all that. So, just a side of him that other people don't see. Um, no, a good bloke, really good fella. He's very well recognised in Sydney. I, I'd go so far to say that he was one of the most recognisable sports people in Sydney uh, uh, across all sports. Uh, and I think when it happens, uh, the people of Sydney, just like people right around the country, are going to recognise the significance and the importance of, uh, of, of the achievement. Listen to the crowd. Fame has taken Lockett into a strange realm. Like it or not, there is no more talked about or marketable commodity in our game. Everybody, it seems, wants a piece of plug. Not expecting to miss from what we've seen today.
He has been at the top of his game. This great champion. Wonderful player. One of the greatest. Squash clever, Sanington, O'Loughlin, Armat, 21 today, kicks the ball for Flugger! There obviously would be things now when you look back, I'd say, yeah, I, I wish I had done this or I wish I had done that, but look, you know, that hasn't happened and uh, I'm a big one to just keep looking to the future and, you know, we can't do nothing about yesterday, we, but we can do something about tomorrow, so, you know, look, let's worry about tomorrow more than, more than yesterday. As you say, the record uh, has, has stood for 62 years, so it's a great opportunity for, for Tony to capitalise on that. And uh, obviously there's a lot of um, ardent AFL uh, supporters out there who would like to uh, share that moment with him, I'm sure. So it is a great opportunity for him. Tony, this is one of the prototypes that we spoke about a month or so ago. It's getting pretty close, I think, now to being finalised. Yeah, it's come obviously up Obviously it'll have glass, a glass uh, front to it. Yep. What are your thoughts? Yeah, mate. I just uh, looking at it quickly. I think it's. Um, I think the colours of you to make the jumper stand out really good. The record has paved the way for numerous yeah, marketing opportunities for the chance to make the Lockett lifestyle comfortable in the days day. after football. Plenty of exposure for all the sponsors and mm -hmm. and things like that, and it's not overdone. I think it, um, from the first day that Tony and I uh, spoke about it, um, and this is the sort of person that Tony is. He was. Uh, quite adamant in the fact that he, he didn't want a lot of products out there, maybe six or eight, but they had to be had to be good quality, and we've worked on that uh, right through this whole project. Again, we have to sign those. And how many of these are we doing? There'll be 1,300 of those. Right. And they're all got to be signed individually. All have to be signed individually. Okay. Now they'll be bigger than this. Right. This is just really a prototype, but it gives you some idea of how it will uh, how it will look. It's not going to be a photograph of you kicking the goal. It really is a fine art print. Gordon Coventry succeeded Dick Lee, another Collingwood champion, as the greatest goal kicker in league history on preliminary final day way back in 1930. And he held that record for 69 years. Now, Plugger has taken the mark into new territory. From now on, the phrase Plugger 1300 is his and his alone. And there's the champion who's thrilled us for so long, started in 1983. A great day here weather-wise, Collingwood a proud club, Lockett representing a club that has really made its mark in the last few years. I think there's a, a slightly different air of expectancy. Two weeks ago against the Eagles it was perhaps what if he breaks the record today, um, but today I think it's just a matter of when. In board, McPherson, will he draw a player? Doesn't quite, then gets around, well, on his he's left, he's a good kick, Lockett's on to him, he's got him! <laughs> Let's all take a deep breath. It was only a matter of time, wasn't it? I think Mel Michael got caught watching the game a little bit there because um, McPherson was just hanging onto the ball, dodging and weaving. Yeah. He got caught watching. Plugger read it a little bit better. He's improved his angle. Goes for it. Yeah. Oh. He's, he's getting closer. <laughs> Magnificent. He might go now. Very hard and long. One out. Yes. Monkey's going to get back. Plugger's got it. <laughs> he's going to reach for the record. It's all awesome. good. Very excited, um, but as far as uh, no, I don't think I was nervous or anything like that. I was looking forward to get it, getting it over and done with. Um, but it was just one of those things, I guess. Uh, you know, you just get a bit anxious, and you know, if you do that, you know, you do. You're, uh, I think your judgment might just go out a little bit. Ball comes to ground. Kelly pushes it out. Oh, 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 the ground. He didn't know what to do. <laughs> By Bathars, little kick around the corner from Good Maxfield. Didn't panic, didn't rush. Kelly and Burns off ball in the fall. Yep. Kelly's kick. Well, this could be interesting. Look at Monkey racing back to try and get there. We're very close to quarter time. Plugger goes. He goes. He yes! Goes. yes! There it is. He gets it. Well, you feel like there's so much to say. Bruce, you said that Kelly had loved to kick it to him. He has done that. The security are running from everywhere now. He played on last time from here. So I was about to now. say, what would happen if he played on the side of Gwen? So he cannot improve the angle. So, for 90 years, the Collingwood Footy Club have held the record, and for 62 years, it stood at 12.99. Will he write his name in the record book? 
forever. Come on, buddy. with this kick, it's going to go. Got it. It's done. Got it. He's done. Ah. And aren't we privileged to be a little part of it? A remarkable play ensures the fact for however long we play the game, he will be remembered forever. Who knows who the greatest of them all is? But we can tell you now that nobody has played the great game has kicked as many as this man. Very proud, and I'm so pleased it's over. <laughs> you just got to take your hat off to Big Plugger, the great one. He's finally done it. Here he goes. He's finally it. done it. How's that feel, mate? You're the man that put it down his throat. How'd you feel then? It was good. I, I, I would have liked to do it, but if it didn't happen, it didn't happen, but it was nice to do it. So I'll, uh, I'll let him know. You let him know? Yeah, I'll let him know. The, uh, the kick that actually went through was probably the worst kick I've done all day. It floated a bit. It just floated, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, anyway, that's just the way it goes. Um, I don't usually kick many goals in that pocket either. It's not all uh, uh, That's the pocket I really like we train at, and, uh, I've, you know, more I practice from that pocket. It's probably the worst pocket on the ground for me, so um, that thought was running through my head too. Um, but look, it was just great for it. They, no matter how it went through, it went through, and that's, that's what I was happy about. When to get there, to form a bit of a protective shield around him. And the quickest way to get rid of the crowd is to take Flutter off the ground. Williams, Kinnear. Looks a good athlete, Kinnear. The kick didn't go far enough. Nix has got it. Belts it hard and high. Kelly and Lockett are there for the swats. Lockett's got it. Sort of fell into his lap almost. Got front spot. He certainly did, but I tell you what, Paul Kelly gave a nice little shove in there. I reckon that should just about have been a free kick against Kelly, but he just got rid of the other Collingwood player. But he burnt. And yeah. it allowed Plugger just to find himself in the right spot and the ball landed there. <laughs> He's already got about 600 on his nearest this is legitimate bread, rival. Bread and butter for a bloke that's kicked 1,300, isn't it? You would reckon. Over the ball, and the Swans need the goal. He's, on. He's got it. He's got four. Brown and Rocker, two of their veterans, are really keeping them in here. Stephen Kerr has come off the bench and went straight down to pick up Anthony Rocker. Goods gets over Monkey as he's done all day. O'Loughlin, well played. Back to Fosdyke. Fosdyke with a big kick. Lockett's got a half a chance here. Oh, oh right super right. grab. Now that is just a super grab. Under pressure, he had his opponent jumping in his back to post the ball. He had a, a pair coming in from the side. He stretched the big arms. He just threw them up there and clamped it in one clean grab. That is as good a strong mark as you'll see. Well, the running on empty, I think, is out the window now. I think he's back in the groove, don't you? He said, we've got a game to win here, and I better do something, and he's doing it. That's kick strong. four. Very careful. He's kicked five. Russell, they could ill afford to lose Dunkley. Russell at centre half back. Kicks a beauty actually right to Nix. Nix takes his man on. Back turn, finds some space. Little bounce. He's normally a great kick. Plugger yeah. goes short. He's got him. Wonderful stuff. Russell's kick was a beauty. And Nix sized it up perfectly. And one of the few times Plugger's been able to lead straight up the middle of the ground. A couple of Collingwood defenders were actually dropping back to help out with the long kick. And inadvertently, they didn't realise that Plugger was coming straight at them. He ran straight by them. It was a well-weighted kick, just over the head of the uh, Collingwood opponent who was in the space, found the leading locket, and likely to be his third of the quarter. Tell you what, if he was kicking for goal number six a fortnight ago, we would have got excited. He's got okay. six today. <laughs> Dunkley, Saddington, Luff, set a half back, looked up, delivers, neat kick. O'Loughlin, oh, he's got a man oh. wide, he's got him now. Creswell, 60 metres from goal, decides just to go thump but lock it! He's got it! I well tell done. What, I tell you what, I feel for Mal Michael there because in that 50 metre arc, there were four Collingham players and Tony Lockett. They just didn't work hard enough to get back in time. Everyone at the ground knew that Creswell was going to kick it long to Lockett. It was his only option, there was nobody else inside the attacking 50 and they didn't work hard enough to get back and give Mel Michael a chop out. Well, Mel Michael did the right thing, Jase. He came down the ground, he gave, gave the Collingwood side a chance. Gavin Brown's kick across there, turnover once again for Costin. Well, not only is he a record breaker, as he's been so often, it looks like he might be a match winner. He, he can thread the needle from an angle too. There's no problems with the angle. This will be the last play of the third quarter. Will he do it again on the siren?
Oh, he will. <laughs> Seven of the big ones. Memorable ones. He's given them the break they needed. The giant stands tall. Tell me exactly what had happened. Well, we were standing here waiting for that major mark goal. He came flying through the goal post, hit me fair on the top of the head, bounced off my head, kicked the knees in the face, and we were concussed. Now, this is your seats every week you come along here? Every week, yes. It's a great day for the Sydney Swans and also for Tony. That was certainly win, for sure. You've got a famous head there, you know that now? Oh, I hope so. Right, and that was the 1300th uh, goal which hit you on the head. It was indeed, yes. So in, in days to come, they'll say, aren't you the girl with the ball hit you on the head? Do you think they would? <laughs> I think they will. Excellent. <laughs> Good on you. Dipper. A story for everybody. Dipper, Dipper, I'm just not sure the definition of concussed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good on you, Dipper. He'd love to find somebody cleanly on a long kick, wouldn't he? Well, oh, that is Nathan. what he wanted. It's typical of what's happened in the last three or four minutes. Crouch gets it back. Kelly, Plugger, Lockett, oh. Lockett, Plugger has kicked it. It's eight. The big fella has really hurt Collingwood there. Nathan Butler, can you believe it? And he's at, the, at this very moment, he was uh, berating the umpire. He felt that the man was too close to where he was kicking out, but he's well back there. He only has to be five metres back. Maybe he was uh, complaining about an incident there, but it, it seemed to be pretty fair. It was a very good play by Crouch, wasn't it? Yeah. Forsyth's having an impact. Kicks down the line to Maxfield. Got it. Kelly's running for him. Can he get it on? Back to Forsyth, maybe. No goes longer. Nix could release Forsyth. Which way would he go? Lockett's on the lead. Nix is a good kick. Plucker goes in. Oh, wonderful start. <laughs> Magnificent football. I'll tell you what he did there. He just jumped a little bit early into Mal Michael to, to get himself in the right position because initially Mal Michael had the best spot. Now as the pass came in, he just jumps early to hold off Mal Michael coming in from the side, kept his eye on the ball, got it at the second attempt. And we said he might finish with 10 while he's lining up for number nine. I think off the top, he's kicked 10 goals on 22 occasions. Oh, so he's oh, getting close. Turn it up, oh, Bruce. This could be nine. He has put it through. <laughs> That's it. What a day it's been. Thank you for being with us, but hang around. Ryan O'Connor's got the ball. He'll give it to Plugger. Tony Lockett has had the most magnificent day. And doesn't he deserve it? Not only did he equal and then break the long-standing record of Gordon Coventry, the most faded record in the game, he went on really to be the match winner, as he has done so often. 1,306. Magnificent occasion for him. It's been a great spirit here at the ground. And well done, Ryan O'Connor, to give it to the big fellow. Terrific. Big win for this one. Dipper, it's all yours, Dip. Yeah, thanks very much, boys. Uh, well, uh, so congratulations, mate. Magnificent day for yourself and the club. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, great to remember, I guess. Um... We uh, let him back in in the second quarter, but to everyone's credit, oh, we finished off fantastic. Gives a lot of confidence going on now with the middle part of the year, so we've really got from Solo now. Just take us through your day. A bit nervous in the first uh, five or six minutes. You just want to get those goals up. Oh, yeah, no, but, uh, maybe a bit anxious, I suppose, but um, you know, it's just a matter of keeping focus, what you've got to do, and to the boys' credit, I mean, uh, yeah, we really stuck it out. Yeah, it was just a It'll be a day I'll uh, remember for the rest of my life. Do you realise the significance of this? I mean, it's just a fantastic day for the club and football in general. Oh, I think it's a bit too early, Dipper. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a bit too early. I mean, I'm just, just so happy that we won the game, you know, and that was the main thing. Uh, yeah, I'm just over the over the moon, mate. Thanks for joining us, mate. The boys want to see you. Good on you, buddy. Well done. What an occasion. Swans players gathering round. A couple of the uh, ex swans that now play with Watch Collingwood yeah. just getting in amongst yeah. it and uh, saying hello to their former teammates. That's terrific, isn't it? Well, Tony, uh, it's been a big build up, but congratulations. I guess you're probably relieved right now. Yeah, very relieved. Actually, probably hasn't really sunk in yet, but um, yeah, fantastic day. One I guess uh, I'll remember for the rest of my life. How have you handled the last few weeks? I mean, two weeks ago, the build up was enormous. Uh, the West Coast match, it was always going to be a tough one. I guess it's been pretty tough on you personally. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's been. Um, been a fair workout, workout. So you know, it's just a matter of you just got to try and stay focused and uh, try and remember what you got to do, and that's just get out there and uh, you know get amongst it, kick a few goals, and uh, just do your best. So you know, I've really just tried to do that. I haven't tried to think about the record too much, and 
you know, it's just turned out it's been a fantastic day, a great win for the club. Uh, one, as I said, I'll, uh, I'll remember forever. Well, you mentioned you'll enjoy tonight. How will it be celebrated? Well, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I've tried to sort of keep, a, keep out of all that sort of thing. I just wanted to concentrate on the footy. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure there's a few people around here that's uh, organised something. So anyway, we'll go along, have, have a bit of fun and uh, get into it. How important was, was it for you to do it at the SCG, to do it at home in front of the crowd? Oh, very important. I mean, you know, it's been, uh, it's been a great uh, five years that I've been here. I've, I've been uh, very fortunate enough to, you know, to, to come to the club. And, um, you know, we've had some, some great success with the grand final in 96. Didn't win it, but uh, we, we got there. But um, we're really focusing on that now. Um, and that, I mean, that'd be a great way to... To, uh, to finish would be to, to play in this year's grand final and win it. It'd be fantastic. So, I mean, that's uh, these little personal things on the way are fantastic. But at the end of the day, we've really got to keep uh, keep our mind on on what we're all here for, and that's that's a premiership. When it actually happened, the crowd invaded the pitch. They seem to be particularly well behaved. There are a lot of uh, mothers and daughters even running out there. Everything seemed to be handled perfectly. Yeah, look, it was really good. Um, you know, I don't know how many. Uh, I couldn't see from where I was, but how many people on the ground? But. Uh, you know, all the blokes formed a bit of a ring in there, so I mean, it was quite safe. There was no dramas, and uh, I think the security people should be, uh, you know, they're very proud of what they've done today. It was uh, everything got through without, uh, like, unscathed. It was fantastic. So, yeah, as I said, it was just a great day. I feel like I've slowed down a, a real lot, uh, especially this, you know, the last, well, this season. So, look, mate, I just, I just really see how I go towards the end of the year. As I said, yeah, you know, I'm really big on that. If I can hold my spot, if I can earn my spot, well, I'll play. But uh, if I can't, if I'm going to be holding up the uh, ship for a young bloke. You know, I think I'd step aside and and, uh, and let them bloody young fella in uh, for the future. He made the game his own. Finger, although he has mellowed a bit in the last couple of years, but he's going to have photographers and journalists and reporters absolutely hounding him. They're going to be asking him the same questions over and over and over again. And I just hope he can keep a smile on his face throughout it all. I think he might. I don't want him to be on live and kick on Wednesday night. <laughs> he certainly <laughs> will. Today, today, tonight, on Monday night, the game is enjoying a glorious moment. It won't be duplicated. This is unique. Andrew Dunkley on crutches. He's made the effort to come out with his teammates and uh, be a part of the celebrations to watch the lugger go around the ground. Hopefully they're just precautionary just to keep the weight off the sprained ankle. sitting in the back of the car in front of 40 odd thousand streaming fans with a band belting out with only one Tony Lockett. He's almost got a tear in his eye, the big fella, I think. He has. The crowning achievement in a, a marvellous long career is just started with achievements, isn't it? Terrific stuff, it really just gets the heart racing and the blood flowing. I just hope people realise how fortunate they are to experience this. You'll never see it again, not in our lifetime, probably never again in the history of the game. Oh, there's a pig on the ground. <laughs> there is a pig at full forward. Oh, that's oh, up for four, bugger. <laughs> oh, it's hard. It's only a joke, bugger, if you're watching. I took it as a bit of a joke and, and carried on, but I still remember the day and I still remember I still remember thinking to myself, well, I'll leave in the score when I play when I play Sydney and, and from there on end I think I lifted the gear whenever I played again. Lifting into the right oh, ball pocket. Now a dash back to full forward. That was exciting. And now he's out the half forward. He's definitely got Dean Anderson better. Runden. Showing mild interest. It's great to see both clubs working together on this issue. Oh, right tackle. What a magnificent tackle. That's down home.